Hi, I'm Andy Jones, the content editor for Platt's online education program, Let's Paint. And I'd like to welcome you to our YouTube live stream today, where we are going to talk about painting hydrangeas on fabric. And today I am using the Folk Art Multi-Surface Paint, which can be found in a promo kit 830 at platonline.com. And it's a great assortment of paint perfect for you to try out the wonderful folk art multi-surface paint. So we're going to switch now to our uh, overhead camera and I want to show you what we're going to be doing today. This is a fun painting and it is done on a really uh, great surface. I found this on uh, Amazon and it's a, a very inexpensive uh, fabric uh, buffalo plaid pillow casing cover. It's a pillow cover and it's got a nice zipper opening to it. And because I'm going to be painting on the fabric, I don't want my paint to soak through the fabric. So inside, you can see there is uh, a piece of waxy uh, paper that I've just slipped in between so that the paint doesn't seep through the layer I'm painting and onto the back and nothing sticks together. So if you're going to be painting on fabric, keep that in mind that you want to put something behind your fabric so that the paint doesn't seep through. So I didn't do anything to this fabric uh, except to iron it because it was folded when it uh, arrived here. And I've simply sketched on a couple of hydrangeas and a couple of leaves onto the um, uh, pillow casing and we simply painted and that's what we're gonna do now. So I'm gonna flip this over and I have my design sketched on which you can see. And I'm just to have it on a nice, uh, wooden surface here so it's uh, got something uh, firm to work against and I'll be moving this as I need to uh, while I'm painting and I want you all to know that Emily Schmidt is here in studio with me and she will be uh, relating questions or comments to me as we go through today's little lesson. So do we have any questions before I really get started? Not yet, Andy. We just have some people that are telling us where they're from. We've got some people from Germany in the house, France. I mean, it's international, so okay. let's get crazy. All right. Well, I am going to do um, something that's a little unnecessary, but it's the way that I tend to work. Uh, you do not have to use a fabric medium or a textile medium when you're using the folk art multi-surface paints. I do because I like the way the effects that I get when I use the folk art textile medium, which is available at platonline.com. So I simply squirt some into a jar lid so it doesn't run on my palette, and I know exactly where that is. And I'm going to put out uh, some of the uh, multi surface paint. I'm going to put out some classic green. I'm going to put out some lime green. I'm going to put out some daffodil yellow. And these are all pretty basic colors. I'm also going to put out some uh, titanium white or wicker white. And I'm also going to put out a little olive green because that's going to help get me some nice deep color here on my fabric. And again, I didn't do anything except iron this smooth. So I'm using a relatively large brush. I've got the hydrant, this pillow cover's big, my hydrangeas are big, my leaves are big, so I need a big brush to cover a lot of ground. So I'm just going to dip my brush into my textile medium and I'm going to very quickly just pat some of the textile medium onto the leaf I'm going to paint for you. And just kind of pat that in to the fabric. This is making the fabric nice and damp so that I have plenty of time to um, paint my leaf without worrying about my color drying out. The textile medium will keep the paint wet while I work and also just gives another little bit of uh, protection when you are painting on the fabric. This textile medium will help the uh, paint remain permanent on your uh, fabric. So I'm going to turn this so that the bottom of the leaf is toward me. And I'm going to just use my big flat brush and I'm going to uh, pick up a little bit of the classic green and a little bit of the olive green. Just working that into one side of my brush. 
and I'm going to begin to tap and pat that onto the fabric. And you can see that it's really nicely softening into my leaf. It blends really easily into that wet uh, textile medium. And I'm going to darken the bottom of the leaf over on this side. And we're going to come down the center vein area. And then I will continue to tap and blend this in, creating some dimension to my leaf. And I'm adding a little bit of daffodil yellow to this mixture. And I'm going to just stroke some of that on. You can see how different that um, yellow makes the green. And it coordinates nicely with the color of my pillow cover. Because you want your artwork, um, your painting, to really uh, become part of the overall fabric and the overall design and color that's already on here. So painting on a plaid background can give you uh, some challenges, but it's nothing you can't easily overcome. And we'll stroke some of this color on the other side of our leaf. And I love how this edge really just kind of softens right into the plaid design on our pillow. You know, Andy, I feel like when you paint this, that you are just adding what was already there. Like, I feel like this floral is part of the pillow. That's exactly what we want to have happen. Thank you. Um, you, you, I mean, sometimes you want something that's really bold and a little bit dramatic and different, but on this, I really did want my leaves to kind of just melt into uh, the color of the uh, plaid here on the pillow. So I've added a little lime green on here just for something a little bit different because you got to have some variety in your uh, leaves. Everything can't be the same. Now, when I need to change color, I'm going to use a blue shop towel and I'm going to wipe the excess paint off of my brush. And then I can easily come in here and I can pick up like some titanium white or wicker white on the brush. And I want to put that right next to the dark that we had on the center vein. And we will just begin to pat this into the leaf, creating a nice light highlight on our leaf. And then I'm going to begin to pat and develop some of the sections that you might see in a hydrangea leaf. Remember uh, in my grandmother's uh, backyard, uh, she had huge hydrangea bushes. And in the summers, they were filled with these huge blue uh, flower heads. But I think the prettiest hydrangeas that I've ever seen were on Martha's Vineyard uh, in the summer. And they were everywhere you look, just huge, huge hydrangea bushes with these beautiful blooms on them. I love hydrangeas. I think they are probably like the number two flower in the flower world. Roses always will be the number one, and I think the beautiful soft hydrangeas are like the number two flower. But you could see how I've created these kind of sections or ridges um, on the leaf, and I just keep checking my monitor to make sure that it's looking good there too. And we'll do the same thing over on the opposite side of the leaf. And this is just loosely patting on some lighter color. And you see just how quickly and easily you can create those Realism. really, really yeah. those soft little sections there. It's not, it doesn't take a lot of work to uh, create a leaf like this. I don't think we've been painting five minutes and we've already got a really nice uh, looking leaf on here. And I can come back. I'm just going to start to play a little bit here and start to just stroke a little bit of some white back on from this outside edge creating a very, very soft look. 
because we don't want our uh, leaf to be jarring. We really do want it to become part of the design of our pillow. So that softened that side in very nicely. And over here, I'm going to do uh, just the opposite. I'm going to take some of my darker color and put that on the outside edge to help that soften into the uh, buffalo plaid look. So Andy, um, would you say that the textile medium is helping it blend and really get into the fibers of this material? It's doing a couple of things. It is helping it uh, soak into the uh, fabric, no doubt, because we've wet the fabric with the medium, so our paint softens into the uh, textile medium. And it also keeps everything wet. So when you're painting with acrylics, uh, you don't want your paint to start to dry out on you. So by having the fabric wet with the textile medium, it is uh, plenty wet and you can blend and play with it um, probably for too long uh, before you need to begin to worry about it starting to dry out on you. All right, so I'm not going to play with this much more. I don't know why I said that. I am going to play with it some more. <laughs> it's always you're indecisive. The, yeah, it's always the way. You think you're going to leave something alone, and then it's like, no, let me add a little something. Um, so I'm going to add a little uh, Look at Me Blue, which is a very nice kind of bright blue color. But when I add this to my hydrangea leaf, hopefully it's going to just add a nice little accent. So just stroke a little bit of that on. It's not really showing up on the monitor. So let me make this a little bit bolder so that it does show up for you. So I'm just going to stroke some of that on again. Oh, and it showed up on my hand much better than it does on <laughs> the pillow. So let's clean that off. That's a must. And then to make this show up, I'm going to add a little bit of white into my Look At Me Blue so it's a little bit lighter color. And then we'll come back and we'll try to accent this again. And hopefully, yeah, we get a little bit of it to show up on there. Uh, I will lift this up toward the camera so that we can get a bit of a, a little close-up going on there so you could see those little blue accents on there. And that's a simple little hydrangea leaf. So no, no hard techniques uh, there. And now I'm going to, uh, well, let me do, quickly show you what a stem looks like done in this technique. So I'm going to take some of my textile medium and some of my dark green, and let me get that little dog hair out of there. I take a little dog hair with me everywhere I go. All right, so the stems we're going to just stroke on here, and you have to make sure that your stem is big enough to hold up the hydrangea head because you don't want a really um, super thin uh, stem here and a giant flower. Uh, they have to coordinate with each other. And then I'm going to attach that leaf to my stem. Okay, so hydrangea flowers, they come in all different kinds of colors. And my favorite are the um, the blue and purple uh, flowers that have some of the green still showing in them. Cannot get enough of those. So that's exactly what we are going to do today. So I'm still using uh, my one inch flat brush because I've got a really big hydrangea to paint. And you always want to use an appropriate size brush. That's probably one of the most important tricks and tips I can give you is don't use a little brush when you actually need a big brush. So I've picked up more of my uh, textile medium and I'm going to begin to pat and dab that in the area where my flower head is. Go ahead, Emily, with your question. Sure, so um, Larissa is asking, does the textile medium help the paint from cracking when it's dry? And then there's a follow-up question after that. Okay. Uh, this paint should not crack at all. Um, the textile medium will help that. The only way that the paint would crackle is if you had a super, super thick, um, solid, heavy mass of paint. Uh, and that would not, you wouldn't want that when you're painting on fabric anyway. 
So, and then you said there was a follow-up. Yes, so does the textile meal medium help the fabric remain flexible where the paint is applied? Yes, I'm using a small amount of paint, so the paint, the fabric would remain flexible, but the uh, textile medium just makes the um, paint just a little softer. I hope that answers her question. And would you recommend, uh, Linda is asking this question, would you recommend uh, using this fabric medium on a burlap canvas? Yes, I would. Awesome. <clears throat> All right, was that Larissa? Did she say if she's from Russia or not? Um, I'd have to look back. Let me see if she had said anything. It's okay. I mean, I just happen to know a Larissa oh, okay. from Russia. <laughs> um, so it would be nice if it would be fun if she was watching, but it oh, could be a okay. different Larissa. I'm not sure, but Larissa, if you're watching, are you from Russia? <laughs> All right. So I am now picking up some Look at Me Blue, which is a beautiful blue color. And I'm going to begin to pat and dab this on my hydrangea. And please note, I am holding the brush as far back on the handle as I possibly can. Uh, this will help me create a much softer, looser flower form. If you're holding it, um, if you hold your brush down near the ferrule and you've got a death grip on it, that's not, that's not helpful. So loosely hold the brush and we want to make sure that the outside edge of our hydrangea has a really nice shape to it. Um, you don't want your hydrangeas to look like some um, circle. Uh, that's not a, a very attractive shape. So you want to uh, just make sure that your flower head it has an interesting shape to it. And there's some little areas that come in and some that go out. You always are trying to make sure that your painting has a lot of visual interest for anyone who is looking at it. All right, so I'm looking at that, and it's, it's pretty nice. I'm sure it probably could be a little bit better, but we, I want you to see that you don't have to spend a tremendous amount of time messing with something like this. Now, for the little flowerettes, or fl yeah, I guess there are flowerettes, that compose the big head of the hydrangea, I'm shifting down to a number 12 flat brush. So it's, um, it's a smaller brush, but it's, it's you know, it's going to cover some ground pretty quickly. So I am going to take some of my uh, Look At Me Blue and I'm going to add some titanium white to that because I want these petals to show up a little bit lighter than what is on the pillow at this time. So we're just brush mixing a lighter blue here and we are going to again hold our brush as far back on the handle as we can and we are going to begin to um, just kind of dab on some little lighter uh, suggestions of flowers. Now, I'm, I'm trying to choose my words carefully here because I, as you can see, I am not, by any stretch of the imagination, painting individual flower petals here or trying to create the little, um, the little flowerettes. I'm giving this flower head the suggestion or the impression that there are lighter little petals on here. And that's all I'm doing. I'm, in my mind, I'm thinking we need to create some light little areas on here that kind of look like flower petals, but that I don't need to spend much time or effort to create. All right, so I've just picked up a little bit more white on my brush. And over on the right-hand side of my uh, flower head, I'm going to begin to dab a little bit more of this lighter blue over there. And each little dab is its own individual dab, so watch. I dab, I pick my brush up, I move it, I dab. I pick my brush up and I move it and I dab. So I'm not painting in solid. I am picking up my brush every time I dab and I'm moving my brush from corner to corner and across the flower head starting on the lighter side and then moving over toward my side that's in a bit more shadow. Okay, so I'm going to wipe my brush off on my blue shop towel and I'm going to pick up some more white on my brush and I'm going to come just to the edge of my little puddle of light blue over here 
and I'm making an even lighter blue color. This is almost white. And we're going to come back to our flower and we're going to add some little lighter dabs of this color on here. And we are creating some of the brighter highlights that we're going to have on our flower. And you can see pretty quickly that this is starting to look like a hydrangea. And I'm not killing myself painting every little petal. That doesn't do anybody any good. All right, so I mentioned that I love the hydrangeas that have the, the blues and the purples and the greens uh, in them. So to make my green to go in my hydrangea, I'm picking up a little bit of daffodil yellow and I'm going to brush mix that into my light blue color and my white and I have created a lovely light green color that is going to be perfect on my hydrangea. You can see that I've added a little bit of an accent color there but I need it to be a little stronger so I'm going to add some more yellow, blue, and white to my brush. And now we're going to come back and we're going to dab some of this on and hopefully it's going to show up. It's not showing up too well on my monitor. So Maybe just, you could bring it closer once you finish this step. So I will do see. that. And so just dabbing some of this on kind of uh, between the light and the darker side of my flower. So let's bring that up for a close up. So you could see that green kind of there in the center of the flower. And then because I promised you purple, I won't let you down. I'm going to use a little perfect purple. Now I could have painted the whole hydrangea instead of using the look at me blue, I could have used um, the perfect purple. But I'm just going to pick up a little perfect purple on my number 12 flat brush. Let's add a little textile medium to that and work that into my um, number 12 flat and over here on my darker side I'm going to add some of this beautiful purple in here and where the purple comes up next to the green and is mixing in with this blue it is just so lovely on this particular pillow All right, so let me show you this. Uh, you've got a question, Emily? Yeah, go ahead and show this, and okay. then I'll be able to go into those questions. Okay, you could see the little bit of purple that we've got on there, and I think that just makes this so realistic. It's not realistic, naturalistic. So it makes it look like a very natural little hydrangea, and love the colors of the green and the purple and the blue hydrangea. Okay, so what was your question? So we have a couple questions. Okay. So first, it'll be project related. Okay. And um, is there a template for this? And if not, do you have resources of other templates for hydrangeas that others could use? Um, I don't really have a uh, template for this, but if you look at the, um, there's some online uh, images of this, you can, it's very simple to copy. It's like a kidney shaped flower head and a couple of leaves. So let's flip this back to our finished side so you can see. Um, it's, it's a very simple thing and you can just take a screenshot if you needed to from your computer and you'll have a template there if you feel the need for that. But I think you could probably just simply look at what's there and either use a piece of chalk or a pencil and just lightly sketch out your design and you could do that pretty easily. All right, another question is, okay. where did you get this cover? Okay, I got this cover uh, from Amazon.com, and you just, in your Amazon search, type in buffalo plaid pillow covers, and there are hundreds of them. You will be amazed at how many there are. There are lots of black and white buffalo plaid, and then once you've scrolled through all of those, then you start getting into the really fun ones. And so I loved, this is I think an 18 by 18 uh, pillow form, I mean not a pillow form, pillow cover. They also sell the pillow forms. You can get those there as well. But I loved this particular uh, green buffalo plaid. They've got different um, sizes of the plaid. I think there's even some sets that have like four different patterns that are all in related colorways, which would be fun to do 
a couple of, uh, paint a couple of pillows and then have a couple of other coordinating ones on a sofa out in a nice um, sun porch. And this fabric, I believe, I'm going to say this and I hope I'm not wrong, is an indoor-outdoor fabric. Oh, so you okay. Could, yeah, it's not, um, it's not Sunbrella, I know that, but it's a, I think it's an indoor-outdoor fabric. And so you could actually use it outdoors or on a screen or a covered porch if you wanted to, which I think would be fantastic. Me too. <laughs> Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> Did, were there other questions? There were. Okay. There were a couple. Go ahead. Um, another one is if this video is going to be available after the live, and yes, it is. It will remain on this uh, Plaidcraft YouTube channel, so you can rewatch it at your leisure in mm -hmm. case you want to recreate this project. And then moving on to just another question that people had is, oh, where did you get your shirt? Um, I got my shirt. I ordered my shirt online, and it is. Um, I cannot remember, it's like it's a store with a man's name on it, but I can tell you how to find it on the internet. If you Google um, color swatch shirt Grace and Frankie, it will take you to this website. And they've got it in this colorway, they've got it in a brighter one, they have one that's got a dark background on it, so there are several of these um, that you can get it there, but just, or if you just Google and uh, Google Grace and Frankie color swatch shirt. You should find it just fine. All righty. Well, that's pretty much it for now. Okay. If you want to get back into it. Well, I think we're just about oh, done. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We've covered it out. Let me bring the finished, one, the original sample up close so that you can kind of see uh, the uh, two different color flower heads. The one on the right has much more of the purple in it and maybe more of the green in it, but they both have uh, some green of the... Um, daffodil yellow, the white, and the look at me blue color mixed together to make that kind of green color. And I think that really does help tie these blue flowers into this green and white uh, buffalo plaid. So that's my um, hydrangeas uh, for today. Remember, you can get a great set of the Folk Art Multi-Surface Paint in the Promo 830 kit that's available at plaidonline.com. So until we're together again,